Hey everybody. I'm still trying to understand why I have an inaccuracy in the state of charge estimation. One of the things I'm trying to check out is the parasitic loads on the system. Uh, I'm checking to see uh, there are some warnings from the motor guide people on the motor that you shouldn't charge the batteries with it plugged in. I've tried to be very careful about that but I leave it plugged in a lot of times when I'm not charging and when you bring the motor to the top and you park it in its uh, cradle all the lights go off and all the power shuts down but I don't know if that's a complete shut off so I'm gonna look for a parasitic first of all with the motor disconnected and then with the motor connected uh, the system has been sitting for about a week with the motor unplugged but what I noticed was that it seemed like um, the system had I had the boat parked for a couple of weeks I don't remember exactly the number of days, but you know, a week or two. Um, and it seemed as though the state of charge was dropping while it was sitting here not being used. So right now, the state of charge. The state of charge says it's 96% and that it's used 3.8 amp hours. Now the voltage is 13.32, which 13.32 on the chart would be just above 90%, it would be like 91, 92 maybe. I don't know, I'd have to, I'd have to look at a sharper, um, look at my graph. It's probably below 96. I'm trying to catch this one early. Normally I'd let this go down and go down and go down. But for right now, my goal is, uh, I'm going to check this, I'm going to look for parasitics, I'm going to take it back to the top, and then I'm going to make sure that the motor is unplugged every time here when I park it and see if I can correct my issue. So what I've done is is disconnected the the negative side from the first battery and connected my um, ammeter in between. Now you need to be really careful about this because you need to have a, a, a digital voltmeter ammeter combo that will um, read the amount of current you're expecting. Um, I tried the 10 amp. I've got a 10 amp and a 400 milliamp. They're both fused, so um, I tried the 10 amp first just to make sure we were okay, and then moved it to the small, to the lower one. And at the moment, um, with the monitor reading the Bluetooth signal and transmitting it, I've got about three and a half milliamps. Now the only Thing that's kind of too bad about this that when I disconnected the power it lost its um, it lost its memory of the current state of charge and it put it back to uh, it put it back to a hundred percent as long as I'm at this stage I, um, I am going to switch this back over to um, 10 amps and let it reconnect and that's you know so far down on the scale that it reads zero it's not reading the milliamps but I'm um, at the risk of um, I just don't want to hurt the meter I'm gonna go all right well, let's go plug the motor in and see if we can get a get a reading here okay so the motors drawing 0.05 amps so that's like 50 million that's quite a bit that's quite a bit that probably is causing my inaccuracy now I'm gonna going to um, switch scales on this guy again Get a decent uh, reading here. 35 milliamps. So that trolling motor, when plugged in and off, and currently sitting in its cradle, is drawing 35 milliamps. That's quite a lot. It's drawing down the system voltage because it was 13.3 and now it's 13.27. So it's a load on the batteries for sure. 
Now, just as a reminder, what I have is a motor guide, uh, XI-5. It's technically the saltwater version. And you can see that um, all the lights are off. There is no blinking. There's no on-off. Everything is shut down. But the residuals in the circuit are pulling. So the residual current's about 33, about 33 milliamps. Pretty steady in there. Now, we'll go back and unhook it. And it drops to three and a half. So the three and a half is the, actually the monitor uh, transmitting Bluetooth. Um, it's supposed to be less than a milliamp when it's asleep. So if I take the difference in those two, the motor's pulling about 30 milliamps by itself, which is the 30 milliamps, you know, over time that adds up considerably. So if I've got 30 plus milliamps, um, that's about, that's about an amp hour every 33 hours, or about three quarters of an amp hour per day, or what, about five amp hours in a, in a week, or 20 amp hours in a month. So if I'm if I'm leaving my boat sit here plugged in for a month, and some of these I've been like 35, 40 days, I could have a very considerable error. I've been trying to run. So if I'm losing five amp hours a week, the battery is a 100 amp hour battery. If I'm losing five a week, you know, in some cases here I've been running five or six weeks. Six times five is 30. So I've been expecting the battery to be down 20 or 30 amp hours and it's been down 60. Well, this would be 30. Uh, that's a pretty considerable error. So I guess the moral of the story, so to speak, is um, I need to come up here and, and unplug this trolling motor every single time. And we're going to see. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to hook this all back together and I'm going to get my little generator out here and charge. I'm going to set this thing up to charge. Uh, and Hopefully in a couple hours, two, three, four hours, it'll bring it back up to the top. And then I'm going to try this out and, and verify that that really works. So just as a double check, that's motor plugged in and Bluetooth transmitting. It's at 36. This is just the monitor at 3.4, or yeah, 3.4 milliamps. Now I turned off my Bluetooth and shut down the app. And I'm still getting 3.4 from draw from the system somewhere. 3.4 milliamp. Now I don't know where that could be coming from. The motor is disconnected completely. I need to do some because the the battery charger is hooked up, but it's not um, active. Let me take a look at a couple things. Well, given that the battery monitor is still awake and active, even though it's not Bluetoothing, you get 3.4 milliamps, and we have 3.4 milliamps, and the gauge is still up, showing 13.3 volts, but it's still active. So at some point, I think that'll go to sleep when it sees the activity go away. And according to the specs, it's supposed to be less than a milliamp. But for now, I'm going to go connect those batteries back up and get the charger on it. And we'll see if that makes a uh, makes an improvement. All right, battery's all connected back up. If you work on these things, you just have to be very, very, very careful. There's a lot of energy in these batteries, and if you accidentally get a wrench across and short circuit things, you could get hurt. So you'll see, I've got my uh, you know the terminals are covered, and I went for the ground and tried to be very careful with it. So now I'm going to get that uh, charger fired up. So just for reference, here's a quick compare between the voltage measurement off the meter and my, um, my Klein meter. So the system is reporting 13.32 and I put my voltmeter across the same battery and it's reporting 13.30. So it's, they're different by two hundredths of a volt, which is a pretty, pretty small number. And 
and the system is reporting 26.64 all the way across so both batteries are at 13.32 and like I say I got 13.30 so we're pretty doggone close all right the charging is up and running it's so got 13.45 and about a little less than 7 amps and uh, we'll see I mean, it's showing 100% because I disconnected things. So we'll just wait for it to come up and uh, max out and go through absorption. And then, uh, and then we'll put her back to work. A couple of things really quick just for follow-up. First, you may ask, hey, you got a battery monitor. If there's a parasitic on the system, why isn't the monitor measuring it? Well, the standard recommended setup from Victron for this part is to set the minimum threshold at a tenth of an amp. So 50 milliamps are you know, well below that tenth of an amp number, and therefore it will never get measured. Uh, second is, uh, just a note that this motor does have the GPS package in it uh, that will let the motor navigate and steer and hold a spot, all those good things. And it may be part of the parasitic. I don't know if a motor without GPS has a lower parasitic or not, but it seems that the GPS is always pretty well fired up. When I drop the motor in, it's already got a position figured out. So just uh, food for thought. I hope you enjoyed that video. If so, please subscribe to my channel.